What's up Illumineers? Welcome back to another video here on Inkspot Games. My name is Matt and I am so excited to have the first Twitter question video on the channel. And this is something I've actually borrowed from other content creators for other card games on YouTube. And I figured it'd be really cool to introduce this to the Lorcana community. Basically how it works is I put a prompt on Twitter and you can respond to that prompt with your opinion or whatever and have a chance to be featured on one of these videos as we look through the responses and sort of talk about them. They can be fun, they can be a little more serious, but yeah, so I'm really, really excited to try this out. This has been really fun to do, talking to you guys who have posted responses to the prompt. Um, to get involved in this next time, be sure to follow my Twitter at Inkspot Games and be on the lookout for the Twitter question. Again, you can have your response for a chance to be featured on one of these videos. But before we continue, please, please, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. We post all kinds of Florcona content. Um, find all my social media links in the description below. I'll be really, really excited to see you come on board as we continue to grow this channel more and more. So without further ado, let's take a look at our Twitter question today. All right, so the topic I brought to the table today is our Lorcana Guilty Pleasures, um, a card that may not necessarily be good or competitive, but for whatever reason we enjoy and we like and maybe we'll even run it in our deck even if it's just ink fodder. Um, the card I chose in honor of him uh, becoming public domain, he's one of my favorite Disney characters, that is Steamboat Willie, the Mickey Mouse Steamboat Willie. Um, I guess if I'm making a competitive deck I won't put him in there, but I love the artwork. There's a reason I have him on display um, in my room here and I just love the artwork. I love Steamboat Willie in general So this would be my Lorcana guilty pleasure, but let's go ahead and check out what uh, yours is All right, so we have a good response here from Dan and Lily Honey Wizard hasn't seen much play for us at locals But it's our favorite and honestly, I can see why it's fairly obvious. I mean look at this artwork I would say at worst it's a top three art in the game right now, maybe even top two, and it's one of my favorite artworks as well. Um, it's funny because when this card was released or leaked, it was one of the first cards that was sort of revealed for Rise of the Floodborne, people freaked out over this card um, just because of the art alone. Just completely ignoring that, okay, maybe it does cost too much for only getting two lore. Um, it is 5-5, five, five, but eh, there's some better cards for the for the price, but the art is really cool. I mean, they made a play mat out of it. So like people like actually will run this in their um, Amethyst deck, even if it's just to pick it up from the top of the deck, admire the amazing artwork and just ink it. But you know what? That's okay. Um, that's why it's a guilty pleasure, but I can totally see this being um, one like a guilty pleasure favorite card. I love this card too. All right, Dracana says, uh, that's Robin Hood for me. Absolutely love the art. His bow seems to be coming straight out of a Blizzard game and I love his mechanic. Yeah, so I actually like uh, Robin Hood Capable Fighter 2. Um, it's funny, like when at first glance, when you look at him, it's like, doesn't seem like the most powerful card in the world. It's like, okay, you deal one damage. That's not that big a deal. But the interesting kind of uh, thing that this card does is I feel like when he's on the board, he's very easy to like ignore. And it's like, all right, well, he's only pinging one damage to me. Is that really a big deal? But the next thing you know, your opponent puts like another one on there and maybe even a third and now dealing three damage. And it's like, these can become really annoying really fast. And yeah, this is actually a really solid card. And yeah, his bow is really cool. Really neat artwork here. Really cool card. I enjoy this one too. Next up, we have Fruit Lion says this one, but also the Simba 5 drop. Both of them are very fun to pull off correctly. The hard part is getting them onto the field. Yeah, so I think a lot of people have a connection with this card mainly because it was in one of the star decks and came as a foil. And like when you really look at it, it's like, yeah, this card should be really good late game, right? 
He gets plus four challenger. He has good attack and defense stats. Quest for two lore and can deal with evasive characters when he's challenging because he's evasive on your turn. Um, seven isn't like a ridiculous cost and he's inkable. I think the main problem with this card from a competitive standpoint is that he doesn't have like rush or something like that. If this Simba had rush, I think you would see him in like every steel deck, honestly. Um, like I just think of like the scar that's just better than him, even though he's not inkable. Sure, him being inkable is helpful, but like, I don't know if you're in a spot on turn seven and you're playing him, but you can't really do much with him the turn that you play him. There's more meaningful cards you could use. So like a lot of people were trying stuff out with this Simba, but it hasn't really seen much competitive play. But I see where Fruit Lion is coming from. You know, the art's cool. It's a neat design. And if you do play a certain deck or play the game a certain way, then this card can really, really work in your favor. All right, PGH Rider 83 says, for me, it's this. I just love specific combos and synergies and the toolbox theme. And this is, of course, Captain Hook, uh, Captain of the Jolly Roger. So what's really funny is like in very early Lorcana, like there is this small period and even like right before the full game was released on physical cardboard, where like the metagame wasn't really like uh, shaped yet. You know, people were still trying stuff out. And when people were still playing Fire the Cannons, like legit, like four ofs in their deck, naturally people would use the Jolly Roger to get that loop, to get the um, Fire the Cannons back. You don't really see that anymore, but like this card I think does mark an interesting point in Lorcana's history where we were still really experimenting with the game and if you drew this and a fire the cannons and you were able to get that fire the cannons back and really control uh your opponent's board it was a cool move i don't think it's really that viable today it's still something neat to kind of catch them off guard but him not being inkable kind of hurts only questing for one lore kind of hurts too uh, and plus fire the cannons isn't like this staple card that you see in every single deck but I did uh, experiment with him also. I do like Jolly Roger um, too. Cool artwork, cool concept. They start really introducing this idea of like combos in Lorcana and use of the discard pile and stuff like that. But this is a cool choice and I can see why this could be a guilty pleasure. You can still play it today, but this is a, this was really, really experimented with early on. Scoop Face says, I love me some peak. I feel like I don't see this card enough. Like. The idea of hand knowledge and drawing a card, like, I all, maybe is this better than develop your brain? I guess develop your brain, you can pick which card you get, but it's also nice to know what your opponent has. Also, the artwork is so funny. It's like based on the movie where he's looking like through the tour, and I think that's just super hilarious. But I actually really like non-ironically like this card like i will play this card in a sapphire deck because i think it's really really good like it's inkable too you know yeah I, I i like nothing to hide also i guess some people see this just think develop your brain is better rooster five man says probably has no real use in my deck but i'm putting him in for sentimental reasons also uh tigger and winnie the pooh so robin hood is another interesting one because like this did see play early on because like it has the makings of a well-designed good card right it yeah it costs this but it's inkable it has evasive decent stats can quest for two and if you have less cards in your hands you can um draw a card the problem is from a competitive standpoint today is that like you have popsicle you know, like Popsicle is just a more versatile card and you'll just, there's just better cards than this, especially for card draw. So like, it's not really as viable today, but this was a promo. So very early on, like in Lorcana's history, people um, were really like, I can see the nostalgia for it, right? I can see wanting to play, especially if you're a big Robin Hood person. Um, the art's really cool and it's kind of one of those OG cards. Um, but it's definitely one of those cards that did use a C play that doesn't really as much anymore. I just have to add Brave Little Taylor says this Tama. 
um, if I'm playing Ruby. It's my favorite Mickey short I watched all the time as a kid on the Disney Channel. It's a hard card to get to even its high cost, but I just love them. Well, what's funny is like, well, first of all, like this card is the poster child of the game, right? Like you see it on all the promotion and all that stuff. And like, you know, he's the Pikachu of Lorcana. He's the blue eyes, white dragon or dark magician of Lorcana. Like he is, when you look at this art, you think Lorcana. When you think Lorcana, you think of this guy usually, at least from a like branding perspective. So like this card, will be more and more and more sentimental as time goes on because like it's the it's the first Lorcana card we really saw right you know forever ago so i can understand this being so sentimental from a guilty pleasure standpoint i mean this card is played competitively it's disgusting late game and so hard to deal with um but it's not always the most optimal uh but like man I don't know, I feel like when you're at turn 8 and you drop this guy, especially if you're playing a deck like Ruby that can control your opponent, it, it's really good, but like, yeah, this this card is going to hold that kind of weight for quite a long time, I'm fairly certain about that. So when Disney Speedstorm Racer posted this and it popped up, I got like, war flashbacks because Whenever you were playing against the OG Ruby Amethyst deck and you got the turns and it got to that turn seven, turn eight threshold, you knew Ursula or Elsa was coming. And when someone dropped one of these, it was over, basically. Yeah, Ur Ursula, like, for those who really enjoyed, like, the early meta game and Ursula being one of those really high impact meta relevant cards, it, it's something people are going to hold on to. And I can understand uh, liking this if you're a fan of the Little Mermaid and playing this even if it doesn't mean it's the best card. You know, that's how I feel about the Steamboat Willie. But <laughs> this card still is good. And every time I see it, I get a little, uh, oh man, those games against Ruby Amethyst weren't always fun. And this card's kind of why. <sighs> but, you know, I totally get it though. All right, so Breezy here is trying to be cute, um, saying, I think you know mine without posting a picture. And like, you know, if you know his brand, I, he's implying that we should all know what, uh, which card is his favorite, right? And, you know, we all know that Breezy is a Tinkerbell enthusiast, whether it's the giant Tinkerbell or the small Tinkerbell or whatever. It's what he builds his channel on. If he could, he would have his deck be all Tinkerbell and nothing else. We want more Tinkerbell characters, Tinkerbell actions, Tinkerbell items, Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell. Nice try, Breezy, for trying to be cute and, you know, be like, oh, this is my brand and all. But we all know you are the premier Tinkerbell enthusiast um, in the Lorcana community. So, uh, nice one. All right, so there we have it. This is our first Twitter question video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to follow me on Twitter to um, be involved in the next one we do. It'd be cool to do something like this like once a week or something. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. I'll come up with some really cool prompts. If you have an idea for a Twitter prompt, please be sure to let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you think and would love opinions. And yeah, so this was really fun to do. But until next time, Illumineers, I'll see you later. Have a good one.